Hey, welcome to episode five of the 108 Performance Lab. Today, we are going to talk about the STI Staccato P. Just got this guy in from Gunbroker. I was too impatient to wait for the uh, Staccato P Duo, the optic ready one that I had had ordered from STI. It's gonna be a few months yet. But... All right, so getting on to business. Um, I've been around the, the 2011 design and it wasn't called that until sometime later, back in 92, 93, uh, Chip McCormick Corporation. Yes, the same people who brought you the uh, Power Mag and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Chip McCormick uh, partnered with uh, Virgil Tripp, Sandy Strayer, and they brought out the, um, the frame as a kit. I remember seeing the little um, flyers magazine uh, page style flyer that was sent around to all the gunsmiths and at the time I was shooting for Baylor's Gun Shop in Pipersville, Pennsylvania. Uh, remember seeing that in the mail and it was pretty revolutionary. It claimed that it was going to be the uh, same width or less uh, than a regular 1911 with grips on and that you're gonna be able to uh, run um, a double stack magazine and 38 Super at the time. That was, that was uh, where we we're going with competition stuff. It was kind of a big deal. So uh, not long after that, I got one and uh, started shooting uh, shooting them. And then uh, Evolution has gone on from there. So I'm pretty excited to see the, uh, the change of the format from a strictly competition gun uh, to... Um, to basically a, a more service-friendly uh, type weapon. We'll talk about uh, what kind of changes and uh, things have occurred and also what we're going to take a look at in today's video. So for those of you who have been around the competition scene or 1911s in general and remember the uh, the STI, the, the double stack frames are also the SVIs um, and think, well, just a competition toy, that kind of thing. Uh, or unreliable, finicky. Uh, so all those things were were valid uh, during the time that uh, STI was primarily a company interested in the competition sector. So fast forward to around, uh, well, 2017, a couple years ago, um, total corporate reorg. A lot of former mill guys heading up the, uh, the key uh, points in the operation. In fact, uh, off the top of my head, I think all the key guys are former mill guys. So they came in with a fresh new look, uh, former uh, competition guys, shooters, and uh, all of them just interested in taking uh, what was a pretty cool platform and then changing what you can do with it. Uh, to say that the 2011 is inherently unreliable would be a false statement because it is probably uh, the most winning platform out there in USPSA competition. If you total up all the limited, limited 10 and um, open category uh, wins with it over the years since the inception of the platform, that's a lot. I mean, as a, as a pile of them, and to say that it is inherently unreliable is false. However, there's a lot of things that you had to do. You had to special uh, tune your hand loads to a specific length of the magazines. The magazines had to get tuned. So this is an important part I wanted to get to because not everyone understands the difference that's occurred. So this is a generation one magazine uh, in nine millimeter, uh, had a spacer in the back and uh, two ribs and also uh, no witness marks on the back. So this was a generation one magazine and we basically had this from about 92, 93 until two years ago. So it was about 25 years of production on what was essentially generation one, All right? The tooling for this magazine did not permit it to be formed in a manner that gave you a, a complete shape at the end. It may have, it may not have. So if you had 10 magazines, which I did once, I bought, uh, built uh, an STI frame, I bought a whole pile of magazines and just called through to find ones that worked without tuning them. So if you look at um, the history of the competition guns, there's a, a whole cottage industry of tuning the magazines. I even had a whole kit from Dawson Precision uh, with all the tools and the measurements and this video. And um, you needed to do that because the magazines weren't always formed correctly. You would get uh, dents in the body of the tube, so it wasn't the correct diameter, it was rough inside. Feed lips might not have been the correct dimension or parallel. Uh, the followers were rough and the springs uh, would need to be set so that they would actually um, stack in a consistent manner. So yeah, other than that, so it was, a, it was a huge issue with these. So fast forward to a couple years ago and we have a uh, new Gen 2 magazine 
which uh, has a different tube geometry and is made on tooling that is much uh, stricter in what we end up with as a final product. In other words, you can buy one of these magazines and throw it in your gun and it will work uh, versus having to tune the thing or buy 10 of them and hope that maybe four of them will work and then return the rest of them. All right, so uh, that was probably the single biggest, most important change. And if you, um, you know, somebody says, hey man, I'll give you some STM magazines for cheap. And they're giving you these. Uh, first, kick them, uh, kick them hard, and then run, uh, don't walk, run. Uh, no point in getting these when these are now readily available and they work. And the prices come down too. This, uh, I think average retail on this is about 50 bucks versus this thing, I think with the tuning is like 120 bucks or something like that uh, back in the day. And you can still see them floating around tuned. Um, not worth it. Now that we've talked, kind of uh, eased our way into the nuts and bolts of why I have decided to check this stuff out. Um, today's video, uh, we've got, I got a lot of content because uh, I can't really go over gun in just one video and I don't want to make it 10 hours long for all of our collective sanity. So today we're going to talk about, uh, basically we're going we're gonna to have a series of these videos where you will get to uh, follow me through uh, my getting into uh, working with a gun. And uh, today we're going to start out with a baseline comparison. We'll talk about uh, the nuts and bolts of it a little bit from the outside. We'll crack into it inside the, uh, take a look inside in the next video. But today we're going to compare this guy with the classic, um, a single stack 45, as well as, let's get this guy from off screen, uh, as well as a Glock 17, which is uh, the closest size comparison as far as a modern service pistol. All right. We'll look at first the weight of the three guns. We'll look first, we've got the Glock 17 empty. The weight of this is uh, 26 ounces. All right, it's empty with the magazine in place. That's so a steel frame Springfield Armory operator. Empty with magazine on board is 42.4 ounces. And lastly, go to the STI. Um, empty, 36.2 ounces with a 126 millimeter magazine on board. There are two different magazines that are available for this. The 126 millimeter magazine is a flush fit and it uh, carries 17 rounds. The other magazine that you'll see paraded around during this video is the 140 millimeter one, and it is a uh, 20 round capacity, but it sticks out. All right, next we are going to measure the uh, the weight of the payload, as it were, uh, of the ammunition. So uh, for the STI and the Glock 17. We have 17 plus one of nine millimeter. So we've got uh, some Black Hills ammo. I have weighed uh, them on the trusty scale here. So check it out. We've got a weight of 7.6 ounces for 18 rounds of 115 grain ammo. Going to the 1911, we have eight plus one in 45. We've got 230 grain jacketed hollow points. And uh, the total weight on those of Black Hills ammo is 6.7 ounces. All right, so that's our payload that we're adding to the weight from before. We'll put that up on the screen here. One of the other important things to figure out as far as uh, whether the 2011 is is going to be a fit for you is looking at the uh, the width. Right. So if we look at first our Glock 17, uh, we have a, a grip width uh, right right in here at uh, in the center of 1.19. That's inches, not millimeters or something. 1911 here has a grip width again measured right at about the center here the medallions full width 1.31 uh, and lastly the 
SCI has a width right around here of uh, 1.26. So you're probably thinking, how is the double stack gun actually narrower by just a little bit than the uh, <clears throat> than the single stack 1911? Uh, well, basically what they did is uh, the circumference, there's, there's a little bit of a difference. They ballooned out what would be uh, the top front or the front corners of the gun to accommodate the rest of the magazine and because uh, this is a molded uh, piece there's no grip panels to bolt on so which is why this became the front runner and uh, high capacity 1911 frames like the Caspian which is basically a double stack 1911 with grip panels you bolt on uh, and also the um, the power ordinance. Uh, so that was basically, it was a kind of a race uh, to see who's gonna get to the top at the time in the early 90s. And both of those steel frames, those are machine steel frames which use bolt-on grips. And I ran a power ordinance for about a season and a half until um, the STI, or sorry, at the time it was a Chip McCormick frame, came into being the 2011 as we know it now. Uh, because I, I ran uh, skateboard tape on the uh, the power ordinance frame, so I didn't run grip panels at all, and it felt kind of weird because I was holding on to just a bare frame, and it had little steps, and uh, just really wasn't meant for you to hold on to. So I took a bit of sculpting and uh, and cheating to get that thing to to feel right, uh, little grip fillers and all that stuff. Uh, so uh, when you hold on to this gun, it's going to feel. Uh, surprisingly, honestly surprisingly good because when I uh, first felt these I was like whoa uh, how is this possible and even with uh, the size of my uh, my hands which you know, not gigantic I'm a smaller guy uh, I was always able to reach the magazine catch and everything just felt really good on it thanks to uh, it not being real fat on the sides and uh, fore and aft uh, dimensions uh, familiar so uh, that's that's your grip dimensions So we need to get now, we've got the, the data and the stats out of the way so that you can kind of form your own opinions about how this fits into what you need. And now you're probably getting to the point, it's like, all right, that's enough data. Hilton, what are your impressions? Well, hey, here we are. I've got a lot of opinions. So an important caveat to this, as I said at the beginning of the video, I've been around the 2011s for a long time, basically since their inception. So this is not a new gun to me where I'm just so wowed by the mere concept of a gun that uh, seems like a Glock and a 1911 had a baby. So, oh. a little Tinder date for these guys here, swipe right. All right, but uh, sorry, couldn't resist. I've been around the guns for a long time, so uh, I've always, the one thing that I've always found is I really like, despite having pretty small hands, I like how they feel in my hands. Super nice slide to frame fit. It is uh, like uh, rails riding on butter or whatever, you know, kind of nice euphemism you want to use. Uh, barrel fits super clean and snug, uh, but without being uh, so tight that you have to beat the thing open uh, when it's new. It is, it is, it was glassy smooth from the moment I pulled it out of the, the case. And uh, the trigger press on this thing is uh, super nice. Uh, I didn't get a chance to weigh it. Like I said, I, I basically got it and uh, figured out some holster stuff and ran it to the range. So we'll go into nuts and bolts. I'll weigh the trigger and, and crack this thing open a little bit. Uh, next video, but uh, I gotta tell you, it's it's just a really nice, nice shooting gun. All right, time to close out this video with uh, paying the bills. If you have not been following along, uh, the most important thing I want to talk about in reference to this uh, organization not being a charity is uh, coming out to train with me. I am uh, building up my training schedule uh, fairly aggressively. I have a whole bunch of classes in the South Florida area, so if you are local uh, to me, check out the link below for the training section and you'll see uh, open enrollment classes at the Homestead Training Center for pistol optics and 1911 slash 2011 performance, uh, all one day format classes. And also if you are law enforcement military, 
I have uh, a number of one-day classes as well at the Coral Springs Police Department. They have a spectacular range facility and we're lucky to have them host us. Also, Homestead uh, facility, in addition to being awesome and huge and sprawling uh, and super nice, is right next to the Air Force Base. And if you can't get enough America and freedom just blasting some rounds down with me on a sunny South Florida day, um, F-16s and now they apparently have some other uh, all kinds of uh, cool airframes, helicopters, just freedom, uh, very exciting good stuff. But uh, also check out the links below for more 1080 performance goodness. Instagram, uh, follow the, the, the feed and the stories for more stuff on the, the 2011 as I wrench through it and uh, just a lot of good content and also discount codes for uh, some training stuff and some apparel. That's, I think, all I've got. Like, link, subscribe, all that, uh, share. Just click things, and uh, we'll see you next time at the 10-8 Performance Lab. Yeah.